Hello, Sir of Man here with a different kind of video than uh, the kind I usually put up. This is a simple tutorial that will cover the steps to installing FX Saber OS onto a Diwino board. Okay, so first things first, what is FX Saber OS and what is a Diwino board anyhow? Well, Jakesoft explained that uh, le latter question much better than I can, so I will link to his video on that subject in the description below. FX Saber OS is an open source Arduino code that you can put onto a Diwino that will effectively turn it into a uh, lightsaber. My last three sabers have been built on the Diwino platform, running both stock and custom FX Saber OS, so I feel I'm well placed to make a basic tutorial. Uh, I should also say that FX Saber OS is not the only choice of software that you can install on a Diwino. There is also uh, Jakesoft's Stream software, which I will link to below as well. However, this video will be focusing exclusively on FX Saber OS. Now, this tutorial assumes that you have already got, purchased, or built a Diwino in one form or another, and that you've decided how exactly your Saber will work, i.e. if it is an LED Saber, a NeoPixel Saber, how many buttons it has, etc. It also assumes that you have the Arduino IDE installed on your computer. Uh, if you haven't, I'll put a link to that in the description below. This tutorial will not cover building tips, or how to upload sound fonts properly onto your SD card for FX Saber OS to work with them. Uh, I might cover that, but not today. Today we'll be covering where to get the code, how to calibrate your MPU, and how to program a Saber in FX Saber OS and then I'll be covering some uh, optional choices that you can use to customize your Saber a little bit further. Now, I will be doing all these steps in Linux, specifically uh, Lubuntu, as it's the operating system I have on uh, my laptop, which is the machine I have with Nimble microphone right now. But the steps shouldn't be all that different in either Windows or Mac. So, uh, let's get started, shall we? So you can download the latest version of FX Saber OS from the FX Saber OS GitHub at this address, which I will also link in the description below. All you have to do is click on Clone or Download and download the zip. Uh, I've already done that, so I am not going to do so just right now. Once the download is complete, uh, open whatever location you your computer saves downloaded files to. In my case, that'll be the Downloads folder and you should have the FX Saber OS Master Zip. Find it and extract it. Any location is good. Once that's done, uh, the first step will not be FX Saber OS related, but Arduino IDE related. Uh, you want to open the folder that has been created and go directly into the Libraries folder. These files contain all the libraries required for the Arduino IDE to actually be able to compile FX Saber OS. Uh, what you want to do is copy them and then open up the location that the uh, Arduino IDE stores libraries on your computer and copy the uh, copy and paste the uh, libraries here. You can see I've already done this. Okay, once that's done, return to FX Saber OS master. Before we go any further, you should probably connect your Diwino board to PC via USB, because from here on, we will be uploading code directly to the board. Okay, now there is one first step I always perform. I'm not going to perform it this time, but because I've already done it, but I will uh, walk you through how to do it for now. I found that sometimes the cheap Arduinos you can buy off the internet uh, have odd values saved in their EEPROM, and that occasionally causes some really weird behavior with FX Saber OS. So I just find it is good practice to go and get the Arduino EEPROM clear sketch from uh, this address, uh, which I will link to in uh, the description as well. All you have to do is find the sketch copy the sketch, copy it into a uh, new sketch on the Arduino IDE, and then run it when connected to your Arduino. 
and this is entirely optional uh, but it has fixed some odd behavior in Arduinos in the past okay so for now we'll just put that aside so the first step really is to calibrate the MPU on your Duino and for that we'll use the MPU 6050 calibration tool hidden in tools this file right here select the sketch and open it with the Arduino IDE yes so it needs to be put inside a sketch folder then that create this folder move the file and continue so let's do that go in the file and then open it up again and this is the MPU 6050 calibration sketch provided so at this point you'll want to put your Duino down on a flat location with the MPU facing upwards and not touch it for a minute or so. So, all you have to do in this sketch is verify the code and then upload it. Once it is done uploading, you'll have to open the serial monitor here in tools and it will pop up a second window. Now, if you see nothing, or if you don't see, see any character to start sketch, or the text is garbled, you might need to change the baud rate here. I will just change it to show you what happens if it's... Yes, if you get a garbled mess like this, all you need to do is change your baud rate. Uh, mine works on this one. Yours may not. Uh, you may have to go through all the other options here before you find text that uh, makes sense. So all you have to do is press any character, send any character to start the sketch. So type any character in there and hit enter. It will run the sketch. And from now on, until it saves the offsets, just don't touch your Arduino and it should be fine. And once it's successful, there we go, it will ask you to uh, save the values into EEPROM, EEPROM, press Y. So just enter Y, enter. And there, your MPU 6050 is calibrated. Success! So we'll close all this down and go back to the main uh, folder. Now that your MPU 6050 is calibrated, uh, let's get on to actually programming your Duino. So you will need to select the FX S Eno file and open it. Uh, it will again ask you to create a folder and move it into it. So just do that. You need to move all these files into that folder as well otherwise it won't uh, work all that easily so open the fx saber os folder run fx saber os dot eno this is the code that will run your lightsaber uh, it looks complex to the beginner but looks can be deceiving all the options you want to change for a simple basic install are in the config hw tab so let's go there all we will be doing in this tutorial is selecting what options we want by commenting out the options that we don't want. To do so, we will be adding or removing two forward slashes in front of the options we want or don't want. Uh, when the code compiles, it will ignore those instructions that are commented out and use the options that are commented in. So to demonstrate, I'm just going to add two forward slashes in front of this line right here, and you'll see it will comment it out. It's gone. As you can tell, it's gone grey and it's not uh, working anymore. Now, as we need that line, I will comment it back in again. And that's pretty much all we will be doing for this uh, tutorial. The first thing you'll want to do is select what board you're using <clears throat> in the board definition. Now, in most cases these days, this will be a Diwino Prime. This includes Sabre Republic's brew boards as well. So we will remove those two those two forward slashes and comment it in and comment out Stardust V3. If you want a lucky few to have a Stardust V2 or Stardust V3 board from uh, Andres's runs, you would select one of these two options rather than this option. But in most cases it will be a Diwino Prime. Next is single button mode. So a Diwino can run with a primary and an auxiliary button, or if you wish, it can run with only a single button. All the code's functions are available in single button mode, but the selection of all the options is a little bit fiddlier. 
Now, in my case, I have two buttons on my saber, so I will leave single button mode here, commented out. If, though, you only have one button on your saber, you would remove those slashes and comment it in. Now, the next option that you have to really worry about is the blade type option here. FX Saber S supports four types of blades. Old school scrolling 5mm LED strings, RGB, high powered RGB LEDs, NeoPixel blades, and blades powered by the uh, rare Adafruit Pixie. Most people these days will only really use these two options. Uh, my saber is a star LED saber, so I'm going to comment in star LED and comment out pixel blade. Now scroll down a little bit to the saber type option here. This doesn't do all that much for now. Uh, most sabers built with uh, Dirino and FX Saber S will be single blade sabers, so leave that option commented in. So next, scroll down until you reach here. Right, so if you are a Pixel Blade user, the next option you'll want is down here, the uh, if def Pixel Blade NumPixels option. Now, the NumPixels allows you to choose how many pixels you have in your blade. Uh, 115 is selected by default, and as you can tell, there is a warning here that it can go up to 120. Now, uh, I have found in practice that it can go up to 125. I wouldn't push it past 130, though. So, that brings us to the final option in this tab, and that is, right at the bottom here, ac button accent LED. This was designed with illuminated AV switches, anti-vandal switches in mind. Uh, I don't use this option myself, but I found in praxis that if one comments out hard accent, the code occasionally plays a little bit weirdly, so I tend to leave it commented in even if I have no accent uh, connected to my uh, saber. And that, folks, is that. All you have to do now is hit verify and make sure that the code uh, compiles properly. It'll tell you down here if it doesn't. Uh, once it's done compiling, all you have to do is upload it to your Sabre. Your Dirino has now been calibrated, the MPU6050 is uh, ready, and FX Sabre OS will be loaded onto your Sabre. Uh, your Sabre should be perfectly operational, and now you should be ready to uh, cut through some clones, droids, stormtroopers, rebel scum, really wh whatever you want, I, I, I won't judge. So, uh, yeah, happy sabering. But wait, there's more. Now, those were your key options. There are a couple of other optional things we can do to customize your Sabre. Go to Config SW, this ta second tab here. This, ha this has a couple of software options that we can use to customize your Sabre a little bit. Now, the first one you'll want to do is scroll down to the clash detection method. This is rather important. Now, by default, you'll find that the clash det mpu int is commented in. This option relies on the interrupt pin of your MPU being connected up to the D2 pad of your Arduino. Uh, when the MPU registers a clash, the MPU sends an interrupt signal to the Arduino, which then plays a clash sound. Uh, I believe this is the default wiring on brewboards, so if you've made a brewboard-based Arduino, uh, this is the option that will work. If you are building a die we know from scratch, however, you can choose not to wire int to D2. I did so on my first Arduino and it didn't really have any major uh, effects. However, if you are doing that, you'll want to define out that option and define in the option underneath. The option is ever so slightly less reliable and it is a little bit more CPU intensive on the Arduino. So generally, it is just easier to run an extra wire between int and d2. Now, the second thing you may wish to change in this folder are the color changing options. 
right here. FX Over Rest has two methods of color selections for blades, clashes, and blaster effects. Uh, we have color profiles, which are selected by default, which I believe have 16 preloaded RGB colors that you can select from in the menu, and gravity color, which involves rotating the saber around to change the colors on the blade, clash, and blaster effect. Personally, I prefer profiles because I make LED sabers and gravity color works, but it only really works if you have a NeoPixel blade. If you wish to give gravity color a try, all you have to do is comment in this line and your saber will use gravity color. Uh, if you wish to go back to color profiles, all you have to do is reopen FX Saber OS on your Arduino IDE, reconnect it to your lightsaber and comment out this line and you will return to uh, color profiles. And finally, we have the mighty accent pixel. Now, this is an excellent little feature that allows you to run an independent NeoPixel from the accent LED pad. This comes at the expense of being able to use an illuminated AV switch but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. Uh, this is great for crystal chambers, and more importantly, this works with every type of blade, so you can run an LED saber with a NeoPixel accent. Uh, if you plan on using it, what you need to do is comment in pixel accent in config SW, then return to config HW and comment out hard accent. There is one other option that you may wish to change here, you may find that the, the colour on the crystal does not mirror the colour on the blade. If that's the case, uncomment out this line here. And this will swap the red and green on the data line. This concludes uh, the options you can change in config SW. The flexi config menu. Now your Sabres configuration menu that you uh, use in idle mode is actually flexible, hence the FlexiConfig name. Uh, if you go into config menu.h, this tab here, you will find this file. Now this is what tells the Sabre what exactly are the options in the configuration menu and in what order it plays them. So I'll cover briefly what they are. Uh, sound font select is sound font selection, flicker type, flicker type selection, main color, main color selection, clash color, clash color selection. It's pretty, it's pretty much self-obvious. Um, sleep in it is uh, deep sleep mode. And these options here, power on off type, storage access and UART mode, don't actually do much, so there's not much point in uh, using them. I'll cover last member in a bit because last member is a very important option. Now there are two ways you can change the flexi config menu. You can reorder the options or you can actually remove the options. So let's cover reordering first. So let's say hypothetically you want to make changing your Sabre's blade color the first option that pops up into the menu instead of sound font selection. All you would have to do is find the correct type. So if you're using a pixel blade Sabre you want to change these options. If you're using a star LED you want to change these options, LED strings these options. So let's say you want to change the uh, main color first on a pixel blade. All you would do is select main color, being careful to include that comma, and either copy and paste or cut and paste that option and paste it here before main color. And when you upload that to your saber and you go into menu for mode, you'll find that main color selection pops up before sound font selection. You can do this to any option you want and change the order about in any order you want. Uh, there's just one thing to be aware of and that is last member, which is present on all the types. When the Sabre menu encounters CS last member, it returns to the very first thing available in the menu. So it tells the Sabre how and when to loop the menu over. It brings us to removing options in the menu. Now say you don't want to have the battery check pop up every time you cycle through the menu. 
and you want to remove it altogether in the same way that you've cut and pasted main color to before sound font all you have to do is cut and paste battery level and paste it in again after last member uh, upload the code to your lightsaber and when you reach the uh, option in the menu the menu will reach last member before it reaches battery level and will cycle back to the first option which is still main color because that's what we changed it to uh, you can do that to any of the options before last member you will lose the functionality of that option and it will stick it to the defaults or your last selection swing sensitivity and volume are slightly different if you put them in front of last member so that the code can still work FX Saber OS will use some default values. So that brings us to the last final optional thing that you can do to your lightsaber to make it work a bit better. Now this is the sound font ignition and retraction timings. Uh, you may have noticed that by default the speed at which your lightsaber blade turns on and off varies wildly between fonts. Uh, this all boils down to these options here. These numbers at the end here are the default power on and power off times of uh, the fonts, the five fonts that FX Saber OS is set up to play by default. Uh, they are set to somewhat random timings, and I think the idea is that you are meant to measure how long each individual sound font that you've loaded onto your SD card takes to play the power on and the power off sounds, and then adjust the timing in milliseconds to match. Uh, in practice, I found that it's just generally easier to replace all values to 1000 milliseconds if you have a LED saber, and anything between 500 or, say, 750 if you have a NeoPixel saber, because one second tends to be a little bit too long for the blade to uh, scroll. But that, folks is that really um i hope this tutorial has helped you anyway and uh yeah happy building and uh happy sabering sarah fundament out